Now, covenant means faithfulness. Faithfulness. Imagine getting married and then having a girlfriend. Or getting married and having a boyfriend on the side. Or they call them mistress. mistress. I don't know what they call him, a mistress or something. I don't Mister. <laughs> Imagine that. Can you do that? No. Well, you can. I know a lot of people that have, but it's not faithfulness. Are you hearing me? Amen. If they're not faithful to the one that they took the vow to and, and married and put the ring on their finger, if they're not faithful, if they're, they're not walking in covenant, the covenant that they did when they stood in that platform and said, I do. I think marriage should take about three days. Married people. Not that 10 minute, 15 minute. You go too long, everybody gets bored and wants to leave anyway. But nevertheless, yeah, it takes three days to get married in Israel. Did yeah. you know that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Three days of celebration. They dance, they all get together. I've been there, I've seen it. They get the big old, and they dance, and there's rings of people. Yeah. And they're all dancing around to the music, and they're celebrating, and they're throwing the glass down, and break it with your foot, and they, and they, then at the end of that, they, uh, at the honeymoon, they all come back, and they look up, and there's a sheet hanging over the, the railing. And if that sheet has blood on it, they all go, yes! She was pure. She waited. She was a virgin. Nowadays, are you kidding? They would lap you out of the room. What do you mean? It's just completely gone downhill because they don't understand covenant. Once we understand covenant, now, let me say this. Whatever you did in the past, you're clean. Whatever you did in the past, it's clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. Confess your sins one to another that you might be healed. Amen? Whatever you were in the back, whatever I was back then, God forgave, forgot, it's done in the depths of the sea, far as the left is from the right, far as the east is from the west, and you go a long way with that. I'm forgiven. I'm cleansed. You're cleansed. Right today, whatever you did yesterday. Oh, Pastor, no, you can't say that. You'll make them go sin. No, that, that's up to you. you. Don't do that. We all do anyway. But if you confess your sin that you did yesterday, you are clean today by the blood of Jesus Christ. How many believe that? Amen. Amen. That's why there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. What's condemnation? Condemnation is when you condemn a man to hell or condemn a man to death. That's condemnation. You condemn them. But it doesn't mean that the judge can't judge them. And the judge says, you're wrong. The Holy Spirit is God. And, the, and, and God inside of us makes us feel and lets us know that we were wrong. Isn't that right? I was talking to Bishop Yeboah today. Talking about how the pressure is on right now. Demonic pressure on the church. Jesus said, because you've kept the word of my patience, I shall keep you from the great hour of temptation. Say temptation. temptation. That shall come upon the whole world. You mean it's going to be worse than it was? Oh yeah. Why is that? Because Satan knows he only has a short time. So if you feel the devil buffeting you and tempting you and you're going, why am I thinking these things? Why am I even, you know, I wrote down something today. <clears throat> Your body is innocent. It's innocent of sin. You cannot blame your body for sin, not one time. Did you know that? Your body does not know anything unless you tell it to do it. Right. Don't blame the body. Because it's not the body that sins, it's the brain. Yeah. The brain says to the hand, wave at everybody. And it does it. Isn't that true? Yeah. The brain says that's enough. Put your hand on your leg. The brain controls the whole body. Yeah. 
you see, the head controls the body. So you can't blame the body for the sin. It's the brain. It's the thought. It's the spirit man that does it. But God will forgive and God will cleanse and God will renew. Every day his mercies are new. Take advantage of his mercies every day. Amen. 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 Yeah. You're not a sinner. You're a covenant child. You may fail. I may fail. Sometimes I was watching a, a program where they were going through um, survivors. And they were going through this swampy area. And when they would step, they would break through because it was kind of like a bunch of grass on top of the water in Florida. And every once in a while, they'd break through and one leg would go down. Then they'd get on top and walk softly. And they'd walk and walk and all of a sudden, oh, there's another, you know, there's alligators down there. You know, they were scared. These tough guys, too. Well, that's what happens in life. You're walking right along. You're thinking everything's fine. Me and Jesus got a good thing going. Boom. All of a sudden, man, there goes a leg right down in there. Oh, dude. Oh, look at that. You get out and you shake it off and you start going again. We've all done it. How many have done it? How many have not done it? We need to pray for you. <laughs> Amen? Because you ain't alive. <laughs> so covenant means faithfulness Hebrew the Hebrew word is berit berit b-e-r-i-t means treaty compact agreement between two parties now if you study the scripture you'll see that God always entered into a covenant with someone and asked them to agree with him okay the sad part about this is for some is there are some that that entered in but then left. The Bible said that day shall not come except there come a great falling away first. And then the man of sin is revealed, son of perdition. So there are some that have entered in, but they left the covenant. They rejected the covenant. You can't do that. It's a free will thing, and there's no one ever going to go to heaven against their will. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. No one will ever be forced. You are going in a rapture, mister. That's all there is to it. I don't care what you do. You like it or not. No, no, no. He said, I'm coming back for those that are looking for my appearing. I'm coming back for those. Keep your head up, for your redemption draweth nigh. When you see these things, when you hear these things, know that the coming of the Son of Man is nigh. When you, well, you can't know when Jesus is coming. Listen, I don't, I don't want to hear that again. All you got to do is read your Bible and find out that the signs are everywhere. Right. And we've been warned for how long? At least 120 years. We've been warned. Start about the 1800s, early 1900s, right? Now, the first covenant, God was looking for a son. He wanted fellowship. He wanted someone on his own level. I know it sounds strange, but God's thoughts are a lot, lot higher than my thoughts. His ways are higher than my what. What has he got the fellowship with me for? Because you're created in his image and his likeness like no one else. Mm -hmm. Angels cannot call him father. Only we can. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? You see, when we get this in our head, I, you got to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Maybe you ain't got it yet. Maybe you did. But it goes from this revelation to that one. This one to that one. Last week I had no idea about this, but this week I do. If we're not progressing and growing in our spiritual life, then we're going to miss it. We have to progress. We have to grow and go from faith to faith to glory to glory. See? Number two, he was looking for a family. So he made Adam and Eve. I want more of those. You know? I want a bunch of little... God's running around, look like me. Little G-O-D-S, like Jeff Johnson was talking about. 
that are in my image and in my likeness. I want a bunch of them so we create a man and a woman so they can reproduce, replenish, subdue, have dominion, right? Number three, he was looking for a body. When did he do that? When Jesus came. We became the body of Christ. You became the body of Christ. Listen, I don't know about you, but do you feel like you're getting a little bit of happiness and uh, uh, responsibility on your shoulders right now? You know, you are the body of Christ. When people come and see you and listen to you, your words, your actions, everything you do, where you go, what you do, what you watch on TV, they see the body of Christ. When they hear gossip, when they hear backbiting, when they hear name calling, when they hear nasty things coming out of your mouth and see you doing things you shouldn't, uh, that's not a good testimony for the body of Christ. So we gotta watch what we say and what we do, right? Because right. we're covenant kids. We're not like everybody else. Matter of fact, I'll show you in the word that God said, that's my purpose. I don't want you to be like everybody else. Oh, you don't, you don't hate them, you love them. And you witness to them, but you don't have to act like them. You don't fit in the crowd no more. I don't. I can't fit in that crowd no more. So the third thing is what he was looking for. It was a body, and he got it. We are his body. Fourth, he was looking for a bride. Out of that body, he's looking for a bride. We are the bride of Christ. time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken Generation When all is dark You help us See There is only One salvation We believe We believe We believe In God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe in the resurrection And He's coming back again We believe 